Welcome back, everyone, to another session on APIs. My name is Colin McKibben, Lead Developer Advocate at SailPoint, and today I'll be walking you through making your first API call. REST APIs are the backbone of SailPoint. Even our UI heavily uses our own APIs, so everything that we do is API-driven. But you can also leverage those APIs on your end to create unique business processes or applications that further simplify your life. So this session is all about how to make that first API call, and then set up an environment where you can test and explore our APIs to help you develop new applications. Now, the most common tool for exploring APIs is Postman, and that's what this session will cover, but there are other tools out there that you can use that ultimately do the same thing. Now, the first thing you need to do is install Postman onto your machine. I already have it installed, so we're not gonna go through that step, and I have it open here on my screen. Uh, so let's get into it. So, SailPoint does have an official Postman collection for our V3 and beta APIs. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to go find that collection. This will be in our developer forum, so I will go to our forum. I'm gonna search for Postman. I'm gonna click on that link. I think it's down here. Uh, near the bottom, so here we go. For identity now, here's the official Postman workspace. Click on that, and here we go. Very simple, this is a whole guide on how to get set up with Postman, how to fork it, how to update it. Um, but yeah, we're gonna run through this. So I'm going to fork the V3 API collection. All I need to do is make sure I have Postman open, and then run in Postman. So it'll ask you to sign in if need be, I'm already signed in, and then it'll ask you if you wanna fork it, so I will say yes, fork that collection. You have an option to change the name of your fork and then which workspace in Postman it'll be applied to. I'm gonna leave that at the default. And now it is currently forking. So it's taking me to the web UI version, but I'm gonna close out of that and go back to my desktop client. And there it is. You can now see that I have a new Identity Now V3 APIs collection, and you can see it's forked by the fact that it has that little fork icon with my name next to it. So if I expand that, there are all the API collections that our V3 API offers. Now the next thing I need to do is set up the credentials for this fork. So now I need to generate a personal access token that I can use to authenticate these requests. I'm gonna head over to my tenant. I will generate a new access token. And for this token, I'm going to apply a scope to it. I will do the IDN access request status read, which means this token can only read access requests, statuses. I will create that. Now it gives me the secret and the client ID. So what you need to do is go back to Postman. We need to create a new environment in Postman to hold these credentials. To do that, I'll click this little icon here and I'll click the Add button next to the environment. I'll change the name, something more descriptive. And there are three variables that you need to supply here in order to set up the Postman collection. The first one is the tenant variable. The tenant will be your tenant name. In my case, it's DevRel, but yours will be different. Then there is the client ID. You can set that to secret so it doesn't display. I will copy it from here and paste it into the current value. And then we also need the client secret. And that is how we set up the environment. Make sure you save it. And now we are ready to start calling APIs. So for this demonstration, um, I'm gonna select a different environment that I have set up, but that's how you do that. You'd click on this drop down here by your environments, you'd select the environment you just created so that your collection can start using that client ID in secret. All right, let's start with something simple. Uh, let's say I wanna explore the accounts API. I will expand the accounts collection here and there's all the endpoints that are relevant to accounts. Maybe I wanna 
play around with getting accounts. So I open that up, the request is already filled out. Uh, the collection is set up to include your base URL automatically. Uh, the authentication is already set up. So all I need to do now is hit send. It'll authorize, authenticate, and submit the request. And here you go. I got a 200 success back along with the data that I was asking for. So that's great. Um, but we also have the ability to set some parameters. So because our Postman collection is generated from our open API specification, it automatically includes all the great documentation that you can read from our spec into Postman. So these parameters are already filled out. It has helpful descriptions. It'll show you the limits and example values. It's just a great way to start exploring this API. So let's say I want to apply a filter to getting these accounts. Well, I can expand the description here. And you can see it includes the description from the open API spec. And it kind of tells me here you know, what fields that I can filter on. So let's say I want to get all accounts for a particular source. Okay, I'm going to use the source ID and supply an ID in my query parameter. All I need to do is enable the filters param. The default value is just this string. We'll delete that, and we will type in our filter query parameter for source ID. Go ahead and save that, just so that query parameter is saved. And now when I run this request, I should only be getting accounts for that source. And indeed, there we are. Just accounts for that source. So next up, let's try using a post request to create an account. So I can open up the post request. Again, everything is already filled out. No query parameters here. However, this time, there is a body. So the example body is very simple, but what it's asking for is some attributes and a source ID. So I'm going to say, let's create a new account in that source that I just filtered on. And then we need to provide it with some attributes that will create the account. So if I go back to my get accounts, what I can do is I can scroll down onto one of these accounts, find the attributes data, and then I can just copy all of these and paste it right here. Now that paste kind of messed up the formatting, so what you can do is you can click the beautify and it auto formats it for you, nice and pretty. Now all I need to do is change some of this data to create my new account. So maybe instead of Arya Stark, we'll do Bran. I don't know if any of you are Game of Thrones fans, but I certainly am. give him a unique ID, and he'll join the engineering department. Okay, so now I have this set up. All I need to do is click send, and there we go. We got a 202 accepted response code. So I didn't even now receive the quest. It should be creating that account as we speak. In fact, if I go back to my tenant, Let's just check that source and see if it created the account. And there we are. Brand Stark shows up in my, my uh, CSV source. Okay, so that's a great way to start testing and exploring our APIs via the Postman collection. Postman offers a lot of other features though that'll help you down your development journey. So first, I am actually gonna switch to a new environment. So that would be the token that I just created that has the very limited scope. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a get access request status endpoint. So this will get all the access request statuses in my tenant. All right, so that scope works. I'm able to get those re request statuses. You'll see the scope also works. So if I try to get accounts, it'll return a 403 forbidden. That means this token that I generated doesn't have access to that endpoint because it doesn't have the scope necessary to access the endpoint. So I go back to my get access request status. 
that's great. I'm able to call it via Postman, but what if I want to call it on the command line using curl or, or use it in a, a Python script? You know, I configure all of my query parameters just the way I want it. I have everything set up. What's the code that I need to run to do the exact same thing? Well, Postman has on the side here, this little code icon. If I click that, you can see a dropdown of all these different languages that Postman can generate uh, the samples for. So by default, this one is curl. It gives you the bearer token, everything you need to call that API uh, using that particular language. So if I want to do curl, I can actually just copy this whole thing, open, open up my terminal, paste that in, and I should be able to run that, and it will run the request for me. And there it is. Tons of data. It's kind of blinding. <laughs> But yeah, it's simple as that. Heck, if you, even if you want to use something like Python. Well, I can go to Python. It even has a couple of options for different request libraries that Python can use. Request is a popular library. Go ahead and copy that. So what I'll do is I'll create a new Python file. paste in that code that Postman gave me. I shouldn't need to change anything. All of this is already filled out based on the details that I provided in Postman. So I save that. I run the request. And again, we should get that data. And there it is. So that's one way you can use Postman uh, to really quickly advance your, uh, your development uh, velocity is using these code snippets and configuring the requests in Postman. Now, what if you're not using Postman? What if you're using a different tool? Well, our API specifications do have the ability to download the API spec so you can import that into uh, the HTTP client tool of your choice. Maybe it's not Postman, maybe it's something else. So I will navigate to our API specification Let's say I want to get the collection for the V3 APIs. Well, I click on the V3 APIs. I scroll down to the introduction section here. And right over here on the top right, you'll see an export button. And you can download the open API spec. All I need to do is click that button. It downloads the YAML file. And then whatever tool I'm using, I can just upload that file. And it should create a collection in your tool of choice, similar to how Postman does it. Now, another way to generate uh, or test out APIs is to just read our API spec directly. So if I go to the access request endpoint that I was using, the uh, get access request status, you may have noticed from the previous session that I talked about that there are code examples over here for each endpoint. This works very similar to Postman, albeit there's some details that you'll have to fill in uh, that aren't provided. So let's say I want to run that same curl call. Well, I just copy the curl snippet that it gives me. Paste that in. Now I got to change some things. Here we go. I have to get it all in one line. So first thing I need to change is the default host name is salepoint.api. That doesn't work for me. I actually need to change that to devrel. Well, it looks like my terminal is getting all messed up. Let's try it in Python. So we'll do a Python snippet here. So same thing as curl. Uh, again, I got to change some values. So instead of salepoint.api, I need to do devrel, my tenant name. Uh, and again, the authorization token isn't provided. You'll have to paste that in. So I can grab that from Postman. All I have to do is up in the top right, click on that little icon to edit my environment. You can see here, the access token is already populated there. That's because Postman automatically handles that. Click the edit here, copy it paste it in. Now we should be able to run this. And 
and the same result happens, we should get that data back, and we do. So that, is, uh, that concludes my presentation on how to make your first API call. As you can see, there's a lot of ways to do it, uh, but we do have the official Postman collection, and I encourage you to check it out and start exploring our APIs. Thank you. Yeah.